Some people have a, um, uh, a distorted view of me, and it gives me very much trouble. It's, it adds to the sort of timid personality that I already have. It makes me uh, uncomfortable uh, because I know that I can't give them all of those things that their idol is supposed to. And uh, I don't want to appear to them a fake, but I would just like to tell them that, uh, that uh, you know, I'm just another regular human being. Huey Percy Newton was born on February 17, 1942, in Monroe, Louisiana, the youngest of seven children. His mother, a homemaker, and his father, a sharecropper, name him after Huey Long, former governor of Louisiana. After all, the people are the writers of all world history, are the makers of all world history, and without the people, there, there, there's nothing. In 1945, the Newton family migrated to Oakland, California as part of the second wave of the Great Migration of African Americans out of the South. Though they were poor, the Newton family was close-knit, and Huey and his siblings always had food and shelter. You're obviously in good spirits, Huey. Why? Uh, because uh, I have the people behind me, and the people are my strength. I would, I would, uh, I think that the uh, the court uh, structure and the government is very uh, uh, low in spirit at this time because they're realizing that it's Che Guevara says uh, they're giants, but they have feet of clay because they're divorced from the people of the world. Uh, I have this strength, so uh, therefore that uh, that I'm very secure and uh, my spirit is very high, and I know that we'll have a victory. Coming of age in Oakland was quite challenging for Huey. During his high school days, Huey felt he was made to feel ashamed of being black. In his 1973 autobiography, Huey writes, During those long years in Oakland public schools, I did not have one teacher who taught me anything relevant to my own life or experience. Not one instructor ever awoke in me a desire to learn more or to question or to explore the worlds of literature, science, and history. All they did was try to rob me of the sense of my own uniqueness and worth, and in the process nearly killed my urge to inquire. In 1959, Huey graduated from Oakland Tech High School, unable to read. He was so embarrassed that he eventually taught himself to read. The first book he read was Plato's Republic. Learning to read awoke in Huey a need to question everything in his life. He became critical of the world around. He questioned his family's condition and the state of his community. This was the beginning of his involvement with the civil rights movement. His thirst for answers led him on a journey of self-discovery, and after looking in various places that left his void unfilled, he decided to team up with a fellow student and co-found the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. The Black Panther Party was founded in 1966 on the idea of protecting and preserving black lives in the United States during a time when the rights of black people were systematically violated by the police. There are some that describe the party as a militant group who resorted to violence. And while the party did arm itself, they did so with the purpose of patrolling and monitoring the activities of police officers who frequently abused their authority to oppress black people in Oakland. Huey desired to empower his people to demand a quality of life free of harassment from the police. He wanted to see his community flourish. The party coined the phrase, all power to the people. This slogan reflected Huey's love and commitment to his people, whom he wanted to provide a better life. While history may want to focus on the guns, it certainly cannot deny the humanitarian efforts of the Black Panther Party. Huey was solution-oriented, but he was not going to wait for answers. The party was his way of taking ownership of his experience as a black man in the United States and improve the lives of the people he loved. Huey was a conscious man always concerned for the well-being of people, particularly those who did not have the means to adequately fend for themselves. Under his guidance, the party organized more than 60 community programs. The Free Breakfast Program was one of these initiatives he reprioritized.
Research at the time showed children learned better when they had something to eat in the morning. The program went on to feed more than 10,000 children across the country. Huey was driven by love. Love for his family, love for his community, love for all mankind. He lived a life in service of others. He was inspired by the idea of leaving the world in better condition than he found it. The world outside of those who knew him best could not see Huey's compassion and thoughtfulness at the core of his being. Many overlooked the fact that Huey P. Newton earned a PhD in History of Consciousness from the University of California, Santa Cruz. His dissertation, titled War Against the Panthers, a study of repression in America, analyzed aspects of the Black Panther Party and examined events that shaped its formation. While his scholastic achievements are not discussed as frequently as they should, even less is mentioned about his fraternity involvement. Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated is an international, historically black fraternity comprised of college and professional men. The fraternity emphasizes fellowship, intellectual achievement, and service to humanity. Huey P. Newton was initiated into Phi Beta Sigma in 1960 through Beta Tau Chapter while he attended Oakland City College. Beta Tau was the Oakland citywide chapter recruiting men from the colleges and universities in the area. The chap is currently located at Stanford University. Huey's older brother Melvin joined a few years before he did. Huey was active in the fraternity until about the time he started the Black Panther Party. It should be no surprise Huey joined a fraternity. He searched for an outlet to channel his energy into positive action for the benefit of the people. At a time when black people did not have many avenues for support, Organizations like Phi Beta Sigma provided platforms for community engagement and activism. Here in P. Newton, um, he, was, he was our dean of pledges. We had a line, we probably had 12 or 15 on our line. <clears throat> I think 11 wound up crossing. So he was, initially was our dean. And he was our dean. Back in those days, you pledged you know, a semester. There was nothing to pledge a semester in half. So uh, he uh, was our initial dean, and then his involvement in the Black Panther Party uh, took off, and he was still maintaining being our dean and serving in that role as chair of the Black Panther Party. And then it just was too much for him to do both, so then he relinquished his deanship. So, so then the Black Panther Party just took off. And we, uh, you know, our involvement at the fraternity was, since, you know, many of the members played a dual role. Some members in the Panthers. And my oldest brother was, and, and who we were in the same line. Yeah, and my brother also served as one of the officers in the Black Panthers for, for a while. Yeah. And Huey's older brother, Melvin, he, both, both he, and, uh, he and Tom Broom, they played together. And they both came through Beta Talk. And that's, and that's uh, Huey's brother, his older brother's Melvin. I knew of him prior to coming to Sigma because uh, he came out of his father was a minister. But when he was our dean, the thing that I was so impressed, impressed about is that he didn't allow the bigger brothers to, to get his the best time. He saw us as young men, you know, bright, upcoming, and should be respected. And, you know, paddling and all those things he saw as nonsense was not something for a young, young black man to be doing. And so he protected us. It is not surprising that Huey P. Newton did not believe in hazing pledges. Growing up in Oakland and witnessing firsthand the inhumane treatment of black people must have had a deep impact on Huey. This can explain why Huey did not subject fraternity pledges to any treatment that would devalue them as black men. Now, Huey, of course, when I started the Black Panther Party, and uh, I knew them because of, uh, primarily because of Melvin, uh, and uh, I got to know him because of Melvin. He uh, would come down there to visit. So, and, and of course, I would come back up to Oakland because I was living in Oakland. My mom was in Oakland. And, uh, and we would kind of bump into each other back there as well. And, you know, Huey had a real interesting background because uh, 
Uh, he, was, he was always a kind of a temperamental fellow and very excitable to the extent that, you know, it wouldn't take a heck of a lot to turn him on, okay, <laughs> and uh, light his fuse, so to speak. One quote that I have here is, I have the people behind me and the people are my strength. Um, and that's UEP. If I'm thinking about the type of person um, that, that we can see him as, in terms of if you look back on, on YouTube clips or, or uh, speeches, um, he wasn't this fiery, uh, you know, pulpit type of speaker. You know, he, he, he was giving you the facts. He was giving you the facts from his perspective and, and from law books and from experience. Um, and that's what resonated with people. And the fact that he was telling the truth and, and sharing this experience and the experiences of others helps him to be uh, successful. Now, I don't think that uh, he would have been as successful um, had he not always considered um, the, the community at large and the people that he was working with um, as a part of that. that, that. Huey P. Newton was a kind, thoughtful, and caring man. His tough exterior hid a gentle soul whose primary concern was the people around him. He knew there would be resistance against him, and he was prepared to face the adversity head-on for the love of his family, his people, and his community. 